verse 6, O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Good morning and welcome to our worship service. We thank God for this opportunity that we are gathered once again to praise and worship Him in spirit and in truth. Uh, let us now take this moment of silence to pray to God as we prepare ourselves for the worship. For our first name, we will sing Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Let us sing this song prayerfully. Father, 
next Sunday ang kanyang flower sponsor ay uh, Timunas. For the beginning of the day, wala sila ko noon sa first Sunday maluto, excited na sa ayun sa chakra ay tante. Sila na lang kung maluto, first Sunday Sunday. Pati ako, hindi na sila ay sa mga kinundi sa Tibet, ikaw na lang bahala, sila ko mag-istubihan na rin. Yeah. Next Sunday, for the Sunday group, sa ato niya food sponsor, sila ni Joshua of Kedebeka Cafe, Sir Jen Ray. But there might be some changes kay sa ato niya sa ikang Sunday group, dapat na sila. At ang doon ang group ko. Si Kaka, gusto niya mag-join kay Jen Ray. So, pwede ka tayo po sa ikang Sunday. Si Joyce na sa ikang ikang Sunday na group. Next Sunday na pangugas. Well, ipamit lang kami naman next Sunday. So, ang atang karo niya after church activity, ang atang niya team group pa tayo. Namigit niya, almost sabi ng nakita na rito na, let us do it after sa ramin niya lunch. And also, if kita tax is ready, mayroon kita na sa akin class every third Sunday. Kung mayroon ka, ready. And, um, Last, first and third day, isang bulan na meeting kami ng pastors and elders. For the past pinaka years, wala kita na ka-regular reports na doon niya, finances, tungkol niya, online kita. So, after, before isang doon niya message ka doon, before kita marapamati isang message, Pastor Jeff would give us a further announcement especially sa ating faith pledge sa ating giving. Insidiyan mo na ito niya dahil sa changes within this year na mo sa nagpululi but God is faithful na mag-provide ng hindi mo sa ating mga kinanganon so let us pray for this at sa liwat ang mga damo ito sa laman ang mga damo ito ang time sa ating mga kinanganon Thank you so much, Sir Joven. Uh, before we listen to God's word, may I request everyone to stand as we sing another song, Turn Your Eyes.
mentioned um, before we will go into God's word there's one uh, important thing that we would like to address uh, especially with our church as a result of our uh, financial report for this year that uh, uh, our monthly expense is around 30,000 baht every month but it has been reported that this year uh, regular giving only amounts to 23,000 baht, the monoton nga trends and giving. So we are short of 7,000 per month. So I don't think that even our savings, uh, I think nagsulut the last year with 50,000 baht nga savings, of course, uh, it would not last for a year to cover up with the deficit. And uh, personally, um, I think uh, the factors or three factors are at play. Una, uh, Probably because it's the pandemic, or mga pamilya. So it's understandable. Or ikadua, um, may mga pamilya. I think two or three families have uh, either um, went home for good, nag migrate, or nag transfer some church. Um, kag may tatlo or apat ka individuals man nag puli. And so it's understandable nga magamay gid man ang aton nga giving. Uh, but ikatatlo, it's either uh, sa nab mga nabilin, uh, regular tagahatag, faithful tagahatag, but we're not giving enough, or um, some of us are faithfully giving and some of us are not faithfully giving. So uh, we have addressed this uh, among last nga elders meeting, kaupod sa tanan ng mga elders, and personally I have been praying that this year we will pray and we will renew our faith pledge that we once gave, I think, two years ago, sang nagka-deficit matatuta sa tunga time, that we want to be intentional even with our giving, uh, i-pledge ta ni sa uh, willingly. So this morning, let me um, commend those who are already faithfully giving. Salamat git sa inyong pagsakdag all throughout the years, nga, mga, nga naging kabahin ka mudere. So I encourage you to continue to faithfully give and pray how you can renew your commitment in that giving, whether you will give the same amount or you will give more as the Lord blesses you. Let me also admonish those who are not giving faithfully. Ako gusto lang maghambal that every month we have uh, uh, necessary expenses. Uh, we pay for our food, we, we pay for our lodging, uh, all because we know that physical needs are important for us and sometimes we don't mind paying um, much uh, sa mga physical natin ng mga needs and if you think that this church is feeding you uh, spiritually nga, um, personal mo nga necessity to feed your spiritual life so uh, I want to also um, challenge you to consider and to pray uh, how God would touch your heart to faithfully give. Kaiti, uh, aton nga gina target every month is 30,000. So, sa isip isip ko, sa akon mind, I think we have six or seven families regularly naga attend sa aton, and six to seven individuals nga naga attend um, diri sa aton. So, if only we would give, I think, 3,000 per family, kag 1,500 per person. Um, malapot gina natin actually ideal ang target but that's ideal kag amuna ang gintawag ta ni faith pledge because this is not compulsory hindi yang next week kun hindi ka mag pledge hindi ka pasod lo ni brother Mike kay dira kala sa gua kay te kulang imo bayad hindi ka di magsulod it's not that but as the lord would touch you and of course as our part in serving and uh, supporting God's ministry the raise aton nga iglesia especially if you're a member of this church uh, it is but our um, responsibility to sustain our church as the Lord leads. Kag ang trying taga ni buoy buoy lang na hindi na may surplus kita. That's our basic monthly needs. Uh, it's big. Kiti tungod sa sa ano palang sa rinta palang kag sa swildo. Dira na natanan halos ga ubos. It's just basic and we want to cope up with our basic monthly expenses. Praying that um, this year and the next year God would provide. Um, uh, sufficiently for our needs. 
So, karon sa hapon, i-send ko sa aton nga group chat ang aton nga PDF file sa aton nga uh, faith pledge nga form and you read it and you pray for it all throughout this week. Next Sunday, we will print it out and give it to you para maka-fill up ka mo uh, physically kag i um, uh, gisiyon nyo ang portion nga amuna ang i-pledge nyo nga amount. Wala na nga lang. Uh, no need to put your name. Just put the amount and ihulog nyo next week sa aton nga offering bag or diritsyo nyo sa aton nga treasurer so that para magpagtipon niya sa faith pledge at least we will know pila sa aton tanan nakakam up sa amount nga gin pledge naton para may idea lang kita sa aton mga commitment no need to put your name just put the amount that um, would be your commitment in giving for this year okay so uh, let's pray for our uh, church nga ang gino maghimuno sa aton kinanglan Revelation 18, paliyog sa ato ng mga Biblia. And this morning, we will read together chapter 19, verses 1 and 2. Because um, we will study the last portion of chapter 18, that is verses 21 to 24. Then we will go over to chapter 19, verse 1 to 10. But let's read together verses 1 and 2. Revelation 19, verses 1 and 2, all together, ready, begin. After this, I heard what seemed to be the loud voice of a great multitude in heaven, crying out, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and power belong to our God, for His judgments are true and just. For He has judged the great prostitute who corrupted the earth with her immorality, and has avenged on her the blood of His. Father, we come before Your presence this morning in... All hum humility and all honesty, Lord, proclaiming that you are our God and we are your people, created after your image, but we are still human, we are still limited, we are still finite, and we are still corrupted by the sinful nature. Yes, we are forgiven, yes, we are cleansed, but we still fight the battle within and many times we have failed you and for that we humbly come before you, nothing to boast about, but simply and purely clinging on to the cross of Christ and Christ our Savior who has cleansed us from sin, that through Him we can come before you and be accepted to sing the songs of worship, to give you our time and our life, Lord. It would all fall short if it not for your Son. So we come to you this morning through Him. And we offer all these praises to you through Him. I pray that you would accept our worship to you as a, as a pleasing sacrifice. And I pray that you would work in our midst through your Holy Spirit in granting us the knowledge, in granting us the ready heart to receive your word, that the preaching of your word would glorify and magnify who you are and your plans for the ages. Speak to us, O Lord, this morning. This is our prayer. Christ's name. Amen. What could have the Jews felt in seeing Babylon, their captors, during the captivity fall? The Babylonians came into Jerusalem, I think 586 BC, and they tried to ransack the city twice, and on the second or third try, they succeeded. That's why Jeremiah wrote his Lamentations. They were brought to, to Babylon as exiles and stayed there for almost 70 years. But seeing their enemies, seeing their captors fell under the hands of the Persians. Ano yan ang feeling nila? For one thing, they must have felt that they are vindicated by God because now God is punishing their captors. Naging gabit mo sang to punish them. They feel vindicated. Secondly, they must have felt hope that the chance of going home to Israel is in the horizon. The promise that God gave them that they will go back to their land is an inch closer. Vindication and hope. What could have our Filipino ancestors 
felt when they were finally freed from being the colony of Spain, serving Spain for 400 years. Inisip ko lang this week, ikumparar mo ba ang Spain ng ang Hapon? The Japanese were in our country, pila malang katuig, and actually ang Japanese yah ano yah mo glory sang war ang ilagay na pangita world domination, but ang Spain yah colonization. They want all of us until there's nothing left of us. So they've been dominating us for 400 years. Yes, I I don't think that the Japanese are less cruel. But we were under Spain so much that even our culture, the way we think, the way we speak, naluto na ta sa mga Espanyol that we are lesser than them. So what could have our ancestors felt when finally they were able to hoist this flag to be our own identity, being free? But only in reality, correct me if I'm wrong, free from Spain, sold to our new master. Kaya kapag hero-hero lang na si Captain America, prugin bakalta na nila, i-correct nyo lang ko karoon kung sakto. We change masters, of course. May lang kayo kinutuluan ta nila English. Amo na subong may pangabuyan ta subong. Vindication, feeling of hope, feeling of freedom, a sense of relief. Because our question this morning is this, what are the reasons... Why God's people should celebrate and praise Him when He will complete His judgments on the evil world. This chapter 18 and first part of chapter 19 is still part of the funeral song for the fall of Babylon the Great. The final evil world system. Remember that this is a three-part judgment series starting with the breaking of the seven seals in chapter 6 and is now about to conclude or come to an end in the seventh bowl judgment extension lang ni. Postscript lang ni ang chapter 17, 18, and first part of 19. We have heard of the perspective of heaven on the fall of Babylon last time. The earthly laments of those who benefited from her last time. And now we go back to heaven's point of view. Namian ko lang sa a song of lament. It's because this is the way of the ancient Greeks. In a dramatic form. Explaining the significance of her desolation. Of her fall. As great as her influence was. As great as her power was in the earth. So great was her fall. So we said last time that we will divide this study, chapter 18 and first part of 19, in two ways. Negative and the positive. Lamentation, mutong last time. And now we go to the celebration. That's why ang question ta, ang theme sang sininga last part, especially ang 19 verse 1 to 10. Celebrate. Praise God. So this morning we ask, Why? What could be the reasons for God's people to celebrate and praise God as He closes His judgment on evil on earth? Verse 21. Then a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone. Then he threw it into the sea. Then verse 21 to 24 will be the explanation of the significance of this action that he did. Now first, let us understand that this millstone were large, heavy stones that nila to grind grain to make flour. This is the stone. But I think hindi ni galing, but bayo. Sakto, ginabuk. Sa Pilipinas, ito ginabayo, burari, ito ginapapan lang, ginapalibot na nila to grind the wheat to make flour, to make bread. So as Jeremiah cast a stone and a scroll into the Euphrates to show that ancient Babylon would sink and rise no more, Jeremiah did this. You know, when you finish reading this scroll, tie a stone to it and cast it to the midst of the river Euphrates. And the symbolic action is Babylon shall sink, the historical, physical Babylon. And she will rise no more. 
Ezekiel 26, 21, I will bring you to a dreadful end and you shall be no more. Same theme. Nagakatabo dere. So the symbolic action here in verse 21, this mighty angel taking up a stone like a great millstone, throw it into the sea. So she sa he said, so will Babylon, in the same way like this stone, yung ginhaboy ko, will be thrown down with what? With violence. And she will be found no more. So this metaphor portrays the violence of Babylon's overthrow. This is the same reference when Jesus said in Matthew 18, sin is normal, temptation is normal, but don't be the cause where others would fall into sin because it would be better for you to tie a millstone around your neck and be cast into the sea. When I was younger, we were fond of watching movies like Three Musketeers or ang movie, kung hindi ko tumalipatan, ang Man in the Iron Mask. Nag-start ang movie nga, do prinsipe, ito sa kunungan, ginbani siya, ginbutakan sa mask, pero gintry siya pat yun. By tying a stone on his neck and throwing him into the sea. But of course, he's the hero of the story. For whatever reason, nakabutwa sa. Pero tino. Pero muni, violent death. So the picture that God is portraying here, the fall of Babylon will not only be swift, will not only be total, but it will be violent so that she would be found no more. This is the key concept of the next three verses here. 21, 22, 23. Ano na? Verse 22. The sound of harpists, musicians, flute players, trumpeters will be heard in you no more. Music in there will be no more. Craftsmen, work, will be found in you no more. Light and joy of marriage. Why na may magpakasal? So the pleasant sights and sounds of everyday life, whether it's music, whether it's labor, or food preparation, even marital love, will be found no more in Babylon. Jeremiah 7, I will silence the cities of Judah. Tungod sang iya nga sala. She will become a waste. I will banish from them the voice of mirth. That's another word for joy or gladness. The voice of the bridegroom and the bride. Why na may mapakasal? The grinding of the millstones. As loud as our neighbors are. Kati tupad na di mga, hindi manipaktore, pero mga industriya. May welder tadi sa tupad, sa piyak niya, may printing press, may chair factory. It's noisy. But as loud as they make, Kusa Domingo, sige pagyapon tiltig. Di ba? May lang ganyan sa buong duwala. Oh. Kaya mawali ko, parte sa ilaw. Eh. Hindi sa magpalibak. But the loud noise they make indicates that there's work being done. That business is alive. Because during lockdown, you can hear the silence. It's deafening. So the fall of Babylon ends whatever semblance of normalcy will still exist in the world after all the seals, the trumpets, and the bowls are poured out. Life will be totally disrupt, disrupted and the end near. Verse 24 ends with two main reasons on top of her sinful idolatrous and materialistic influence to the world. Verse 23 For your merchants were the great ones on the earth and all nations were deceived by your sorcery. She has tricked the world into worshiping the beast. And verse 24, in her was the blood of the prophets and the saints. Though it's not enough, time and time again. You deceive the world into sin and you killed my people, my prophets, and my saints. First on a lesson, there is the last part on chapter 18. Babylon the Great will violent, be violently and totally destroyed because of our sins against God in deceiving the world to sin and killing God's people. If the theme last time, in chapter 18, will be swift judgment and a total judgment, here ad another additional component to her judgment is added. Like a great millstone thrown into the sea, you were violent to my people in killing my people. So I will not also spare violence from you. Can you imagine that our God is violent? 
because as she has totally corrupted the earth with her sinful influence, she will also be totally wiped out. She will be found no more. So we come to chapter 19 because John said, after this, after the funeral songs of heaven and earth for Babylon the Great in chapter 18, now he hears what seemed to be the loud voice of what? A great multitude in heaven. This great multitude represents every nation standing before God's throne in heaven, praising Him for His salvation in chapter 7. Now that same choir, redeemed by the Lamb, praises God. What are they crying out? First, they say, Hallelujah! This will be the main theme of verse 1 to 10, repeated um, four times. And apparently, this word, Hallelujah, occurs only four times in all of the New Testament, all in this chapter. What does hallelujah mean? Now, hallelujah comes from two Hebrew words. Our first word is hallelu, meaning to praise. And ang yah is a short form of Yahweh, the name of God. Bring the two words together, praise Yahweh or praise the Lord. Okay? Ang muna meaning sang hallelujah. So next time when you sing hallelujah, you don't play with this word because it means you're praising Yahweh or you're praising God. Psalm 104, let sinners be consumed from the earth and let the wicked be no more. Praise the Lord. Ang original Hebrew word is halal yah or hallelujah. Ang muna ang, though transliteration is ang Hebrew word. Psalm 112 verse 1, praise the Lord. Psalm 117 verse 1, Praise the Lord, all nations. So why is this great multitude of the redeemed saints praising God loudly in heaven? Now there are five reasons emerging for their praise to Yahweh God. Ang unang arason nga nagdayaw sila sa ginoo, verse 1, Salvation and glory and power belong to our God. They praise God for His salvation. Why? Verse 2, for His judgments are true and just. Judgment relating to His salvation. So this people in heaven is praising Him for saving them through His judgments, stating that all of His judgments are true and just. Now godly people love righteousness and they hate sin because righteousness honors God and sin mocks Him. So believers long for a world, they look for a world of justice and it will come. Chapter 6 pa lang, they cry out, ano? How long, O sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long will you judge and avenge our blood? Isaiah 9, we are familiar with the prophecy about the Messiah the eternal father the prince of peace pero nagkakalipatan tanin verse 7 of the increase of the messiah's government and of peace there will be no end on the throne of david and over his kingdom ano himo niya he will establish it and uphold it with what he will be the eternal father the prince of peace because in his kingdom there is justice and righteousness this same messiah called by jeremiah the righteous branch he shall reign as king and deal wisely because on top of that, he will also execute justice and righteousness in the land. So for the first time, our world will experience what true righteousness and justice is. Amuna ang kanta sa sininga mga saints, they know that Jesus is coming. So they praise Yahweh or praise God because His judgments are just and true. Every God's judgment will expose every lie. It will expose every lie and right every wrong. Amuna sa 15 verse 3, the song of Moses ngin kanta nila. O Lord God Almighty, just and true are your ways. Just and true are your judgments. Verse 7. Verse 2b. 
for he has judged the great prostitute who corrupted the earth with her immorality and he has avenged on her the blood of his servants. Gimbalik naman diri ang duwa niya ka sala from the last section. Again, she is always condemned for her sins in corrupting the earth and killing God's servants. So now he has finally avenged them. First, ang alas, uh, alas, na Wait, pa. Second, na no? But this is the first reason why God's people should celebrate and praise Him. Why? He is praised for saving His people by judging and avenging them from their enemies. Now, I learned from this song that salvation from God is not only saving His people from the penalty and the power of sin. Salvation is not only about Jesus coming to earth to die in our place, to give us salvation. Tapos na. But salvation for God, it involves His judgments. Is he Pabla? Judgment is connected to His salvation. This is what the text is saying. That in judging their enemies, He is saving them as well. By avenging His people for their wrongs, the enemies, their, their enemies committed against them. It's God's way of also saving His people. Yes, God will save you from sin and He, you will be with God. Pero mabalik ka sa duta, kung arap pagyapon ang sala, kung arap pagyapon imo enemy, you would always think about them. That's why God does not only save you, but He also saves you by judging the enemy. Secondly, once more, verse 3, they cried out. Same group, so verse 1. Same praise, hallelujah. But on second reason, again, humble nila. The smoke from her, who is Babylon, goes up forever and ever. Why is there a smoke? Because there is a fire. Chapter 17, when the Antichrist and his coalition will turn against Babylon, they will strip her naked and burn her up. Chapter 18, verse 8. She will be burnt up with fire because God will judge her. Verse 9, when the world sees her burning. So, ginadayo nila sa ginawa, ikaduwadri nga rason, because from Babylon, they even see the smoke from heaven. What does this mean? I mean, because explanation sang ESV, hamal niya? The smoke from her symbolizes irreversible judgment. It's not only a violent judgment, but it's a permanent judgment. So, the second reason for praising and celebration by the people of God is for His permanent judgment against the final evil world system, Babylon the Great. They don't only praise God for delivering them, saving them from their enemies, but it will be a permanent saving because it's a permanent destruction of their enemies. Amuna, great ang iya judgment because great man ang iya asala. So her smoke or her judgment is there forever. Now, President Duterte ran on the campaign against drugs. Amuna ang saad niya that for the, for the first six months, amugin na tagaan niya focus, but he knows too well that it should not be the only thing he focuses on. He went hard against drugs in the first two years. Muna ang mga drug ko, ang mga drug lords sa Sudad, sa Iloilo. No more. Muna ang to be found, no more. Bisa ng amon nga mayora, no more naman. Naglakat na sa ibang lugar. He has curbed the drug problem, but we all know drugs doesn't go away. And it will not go away. Why? We can curb it. We can limit it. Mahal, nagmahal, but it doesn't go away. It's still there because its destruction is not permanent. So as movies today would say, cut down one head of the snake, more heads would soon emerge. Meaning, you kill some drug lords, more drug lords will come in their place. 
But here, God is praised because His judgment on this final evil world system is not only swift and total, but it will also be permanent. So for you, you are in heaven, you don't look back and you're not paranoid whether this evil system is still there because they're praising God because her judgment is irreversible. It is permanent. Number three, verse four. Then the 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God who was seated on the throne saying two things, Amen, which is also Hebrew, and Hallelujah. These two groups of attendants before God's throne, we first saw them in chapter 4. Pagsugod sang series ang judgments. They were there praising God, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy. We last saw them and heard them in chapter 11. We give thanks to you, Lord God the Almighty. Now, as the multitude in heaven praise God for His salvation and His permanent judgment on their enemies, now they are saying, Una ginamali lovers for Amen. Meaning, we agree. Kaya meaning sang Amen, sakto ang pag-translate sa ilunggo, kabay pa. We agree with you. It expresses two things, strong agreement and confident certainty. It means that they agree with the song of praise of the great multitude in heaven. And they are confident of the certainty of the coming judgment against this final evil world system. Okay? Ngayon mo ito na sa buong blas, sa aton nga, ano na, sa aton nga D-group. Kung, kung mag-upod ka mo ganit sa inyo asawa, nakashare na yung mga asawa, masaling ka, parehos lang kami, ginashare. Ang muna yung ginahimodres ang 24 elders and 4 living creatures. We agree with what they say. Diba? But now they in turn not only agree, they themselves have this, have this song of praise, praising God, Hallelujah! Kami man niya, madayaw sa ginoo. Because remember that at this point, this is the postscript, but it's still the part of the three-part series judgments of God upon the evil world during the tribulation. Seventh bowl, natapos na. So if they were there from the first judgment unleashed, from the first seal opened or broken, mutong kanta takagina, is he worthy? Kay gusto ko balikan. That was the song we sang in chapters 4 to 6. Who is worthy to open the seals, to unleash the judgments on the world? These 24 elders and the four living creatures were there asking the question, trying to answer the question, who is worthy? And now they have seen it through. Nagintapos ang ino. So their song of hallelujah is for what purpose? They're saying to us that God is worthy to be praised for His completion of just judgments and vengeance on the wicked world. So God's people don't only praise Him for His salvation by judging their enemies or His permanent judgments on their enemies, but now heaven is praising God because He is the God who finishes things. Because they realize that their sovereign master, who is the initiator of all things, is also the ultimate finisher of all things. Muna namiyan ko gids, isa sa mga title ni Isu sa Hebrews, He is the author and the finisher of faith. But here, God is praised by His attendant. Sila nang nakakita. They see closely to God's counsel. Sila nang pinakalapit nga nagasimba sa ginoo. Most likely privy to some information nga ara lang sa langit. But they are the very beings praising God. Our master, yes, lapit kami sa imo, but you're still our master. You're the ultimate initiator. You started judging the wicked world. You will finish and God has finished it. Amuna, they didn't stop with amen, but they have to offer their own hallelujah. Because God is now completing His judgments on the earth. Then verse 5, 
from the throne came a voice. Gapalapit sa trono. So, ang guasi nito nag-zoom in from a crowd in heaven going near the throne. So, 24 elders. Now, from the throne came a voice. Ngayon, nag-echo lang. Saying, Praise our God. It's still hallelujah. Gintranslate lang sa Greek diretso. Diba? Why ito? Ginsulat hallelujah, pero praise our God. It's the same thing. But now He is calling people. Sino ni? All you His servants, you who fear Him, small and great. Now all distinctions and ranks are to be transcended. Kung sino ka man, dako ka man or gamay, taas ka man or lubo, you praise God. Whose voice is this from the throne? Now this to me could more likely be the voice of Jesus because it's from the throne. And there are instances that Jesus, this voice to me could more likely be the voice of Jesus because there are instances that Jesus calls His Father, my God. So He invites all people, all God's servants, small and great, those who fear Him, those who have a relationship with God to praise Him. Though it is also possible that this could be the voice of an angel from God's throne. But this occasion will be praiseworthy. So we come to the last hallelujah. Verse 6. Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude. I believe this is a response to the invitation of the previous verse of verse 5. From the throne, praise our God. All you His servants. So, Amuna, ang multitude ng sabat naman liwat sa verse 6. And I think this comes as a louder voice than verse 1. Why? May more description there here. Like the roar of many waters, like the sound of mighty peals of thunder. Crying out once again and for the last time, Hallelujah! Why praise God again? This is the final reason. Two reasons. One, for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. If in verse 1 and 2, God is praised for His judgments because it's right and true. Here, God is praised because of His reign. Almighty is used of God nine times. The Almighty reigns throughout history. But here, why do they praise God for His reign? I mean, what's the explanation? Here, God is praised for establishing His reign without rival or resistance at the return of Christ. God is the King of Heaven, but He will physically reign on earth through Christ during the millennium in two ways, without rival and without resistance. Among the songs of chapter 11, verse 15, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of His Christ and He shall reign forever and ever. This is a song of anticipation. We, gave, we give you thanks to you, yeah, for you have taken your great power and begun to reign. Okay, Paul, 15, verse 24, some 1 Corinthians. Then comes the end when the Son delivers the kingdom to His Father after destroying every rule and every authority and every power because God the Almighty will reign on the earth through Christ without rival or resistance. God is praised for that because He now becomes King. Verse 7 is the second and the last reason. Let us rejoice. Kagina ya, gin praise ni ang ginoo for now. Returning to the theme of rejoicing. Let us rejoice and exalt and give him the glory. Now I try to find the meaning of the word exalt. It's different from the word exalt. E X A. Kaya yung exalt niya, dayawon or bayawon, you lift him up. Pero ang exalt niya, ang you, ang spelling, actually sa Greek, it literally means to jump for joy. So don't only rejoice, but jump for joy. 
Ang ibang nga translation, rejoice exceedingly or be exceeding glad. Ang manang King James rendering, let us be glad and rejoice. Gin by loya lang. Because kun rejoice ang verse 7a, ang exalt is magkalipay ka pag itudo. So why then God's people rejoice and be exceedingly glad that they jump for joy and give Him the glory? Ang last thoughts of verse 7. Why? If God the Almighty begins His reign through Christ, now His people should rejoice because this thing, the marriage of the Lamb has come and His bride has made herself ready and it was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure. What is happening in verse 7? There is a marriage, there is a groom, and the bride is dressing herself. My kasal. So from the funeral song, now comes a song of rejoicing. In anticipation of an important event, the marriage supper of who? It's the Lamb. So the wedding of the Lamb, who is Christ, is announced. How is their marriage going to happen? Now we need to understand the Jewish customs of marriage in the time of Christ. Kaya muling ngamit ni Jesus ng concept and the New Testament writers. There are three stages of weddings. Kaya para si Ilaya, hindi iya nga isa lang takadlaw magkita na ay tapos na takasal. Pero may stages nga gakatabo sa ilang wedding. First is the betrothal or this is I think uh, an ancient word for engagement. And it's often done when people, uh, when the couple were younger. So betrothal is where the marriage contract was signed by the parents. Amuna, ang ako na sawa sa ngin kasal kami. Wai pa sa kalabot 25. Kinanglan kami mga yu parents consent. Tambot nga ah, basi guru, maintuan ko sa ti. Dapat kami magpapirma. So, the Jewish uh, marriage should be signed by the parents. Then the parents of the groom would pay a dowry. Take my lang kay mo ko inugbayad, ari ya ari sila. Ang dowry is paros man sa mga Thai where you pay the expenses for the parents of the bride nga ginpadako ang bata nila and to seal the engagement. This is the stage sa betrothal where Mary was with Joseph. Sa so, nagbusong si Mary engaged sa kay Joseph. Why na why pa sila nakasal? Wala pa ceremony. Wala pa na consummate, kaya wala pa sila naghulid, pero engaged na sila. It's good as married na kamo. Wala lang ceremony pa. Next, number two is the presentation. It is where the festivities happen. And often, it, lasting, it, last, it lasts several days. This happens before the ceremony proper. Because the presentation is where the groom fetches the bride. Liwat? Amunin na tabo sa Matthew 25 sa parable of the virgins, di ba? E sa aton niya, ang groom mahulat sa altar, ang bride mapalapit. Pero sa ilaya, the bride would prepare herself. She would know in advance this was going to take place. Yan ang sana sa groom, buwas sugaton taka. Pero hindi siya maghambal ano uras. So she would prepare herself all day with her maidens, with her bridesmaids. Then her bridesmaids would also prepare their lights kay basi matabo na sa gabi. So the bride is presented to the groom. Then we come to the ceremony proper. It is where they exchange their vows. Then in that ceremony, there is a supper. Of course, kalaw ay kasal, no? Wala litsyon. Kalaw ay kasal, nga wala reception. And many of us, Look forward in the year sa ceremony kundi anong sud an karon. But the but the marriage supper of the Jews might go on for 7 to 14 days. The wedding at Cana nga nahubsan sila wine because the the ceremony and the celebration could last 7 to 14 days depende sa status sang ginkasal. Pistagin niya. So, sa aton pa, sa una, kung magtambong ka sa kasal sa hudiyo, ma-file ka gid leave. Kasi ang punso na na inyo, pito ka adlaw. Okay? 
So John's vision here pictures the wedding feast of the Lamb who is the groom and his bride. In this last stage, the marriage supper, this indicates that the first two stages of the marriage have already taken place. It was completed on the earth, ang first phase, that the bride of Christ, the believer, is engaged to him, placing his faith in Christ as Savior, then the dowry is paid through the blood of Christ shed on behalf of his bride. So the church on earth today is engaged to Christ. Pukun kay John MacArthur pa, ang pagpati niya yan, the church on earth today is engaged to Christ through what? By His sovereign choice in eternity past. May kapati, that when a believer or the church places their faith in Christ, dira pa sila ka-engage, but any engagement was done long time ago. The groom had a transaction with the Father. Din eh. Ang muna naging tawag sa Hebrews 13, This is an eternal covenant. The blood covenant was an eternal covenant signed by the Son with His Father. Then, this bride will be presented to His groom. Kahit kapati siya makarato sa rapture. Sa rapture, sugaton sa groom, ang iya bride. Ang muna ang lingwahe sa John 14.3, I go to prepare a place for you. Meaning, I, I am preparing our house for our new house where we will stay after the wedding because the bride and groom must go out of their parents house in this lamaglumun so the groom prepares the house or the place for his wife then ano ambaya i will come again to fetch you then we will march to this celebration and we will consummate our marriage that where i am your groom you my bride will also be with me. So, ang last stage diri, this final supper will symbolize or signify the end of the ceremony. Kinatapos ng exchanging of the vows, the groom has already taken her bride unto himself. So now they want to celebrate that marriage through this supper. Diba? So, pun pa ni Arthur Ramalia, this symbolic meal will take place where? At the millennium. Okay? So, isa, kung mga, no wonder nga, kung ang mga hudiyo, kasi celebrate sila sa ilang nga kasal, 7 to 14 days, Jesus will celebrate His marriage with His bride for a thousand years. That's why that thousand years will be characterized by rejoicing. Verse 7d, His bride has made herself ready. Now the bride is dressing herself. Who is this bride? Now, while the term bride often refers to the church, who is the bride of Christ, 2 Corinthians 11, Amali Paul, I feel a divine jealousy for you, for I have engaged you to one husband. When I go to Paul, I will do everything for the church so that the church will be a pure a holy virgin presented to her husband who is Christ so punya sa Ephesians 5 the husband is the, as the husband is the head the husband is the head of the wife even as Christ is the head of the church So the bride here is the Church of Christ, but kapatid si MacArthur, that this will ultimately expand to what? Include all the redeemed of all ages. Meaning, before or after the Church, kung tumuluo ka, you are the bride of Christ. So with the prostitute destroyed, Babylon the Great destroyed, the Lamb's pure bride is announced. Ang tobla, ang contrast. Bago lang sila nagluksa, there's a funeral song about this prostitute making the world sin with her, but now comes a pure woman. Grabe nga contrast, no? Harlot or prostitute with a bride. She is pure. Antwa. It was granted her with what? To clothe herself 
with fine linen, meaning malahalon, of course. Papakasal ka na malang, bakal ka na lang sa naming agaw. Hindi ang do kurtina or do mantil nga klase la, nga tela. Nga gakao ng gakao ng imo mga bisita, mas ginasuyaan nila imo mga wedding gown, baw ya uh, wedding gown do do mantil ta di ba? Do kurtina sa amon balay. This is fine linen because you're married to the groom who is Christ. It is bright and pure. It displays her purity. Pero ang question ko lang, how can her righteous deeds, kailan to sa verse 8, for the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. How can her righteous deeds be fine linen and white when Jeremiah says our best works of righteousness apart from God's grace is what? No matter how good you do in the sight of God, it's just but what? Filthy rags. Why pa napkins ang una, ginagamit ang babae. That's the word they use. Filthy rags, filled with blood. You don't use it. That's how God view our good works apart from His grace. Ang lang key phrase dere, it was granted her, it was given to her by her husband. Her gown of righteousness, her holiness was given to her as a gift of grace. Meaning, ang groom ni nagasto tanan. And he prepared everything for her that all she is about to do is what? Mailis na lang ko yan. Kagmamarcha nga pirti kagwapa. Isaiah 61 verse 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exalt in God, my, in my God. Ara naman ang word exalt, meaning I will jump for joy in my God. Why? For He has clothed me with the garments of salvation, covered me with the robe of righteousness. Nanto ni nga bayo. Namin ni guru nga bayo. This is better than any designer clothes you will ever get to wear. Because this is how God speaks of our salvation. We wear it. Ang paanggid yang mga words. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress. Apparently, ang mga groom sa tunga time may headdress. Ang mga priest may headdress. It's a beautiful headdress. And as a bride adorns herself with jewels. Meaning, our salvation is so beautiful. It's so precious. It's not only pure and bright, but it's also beautiful. This bride is pure and beautiful. Given to her by his, by her groom. Amara sa chapter 6, verse 11, they were each given. Hindi yung isa lang kabayo, pasapasahan nyo lang. Each of them were given a right robe. Chapter 7, verse 14. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white. Ang lesson to the marriage supper of the Lamb is a glorious celebration of all who are in Christ. Ang lang invitation niya diri, let us rejoice and exult. Let us rejoice and jump for joy. And give God the glory because the marriage of Jesus, the Lamb, with His wife, the believers, is about to be celebrated. It is an occasion to rejoice, exalt, and give God all the glory. Now to those who, of us who are married, I don't know if you still remember the feeling on your wedding day. On the morning of your wedding, when you woke up, were you excited? Were you rejoicing? Or were you sad? Or galakat pa lang imo bride sa aisle ka siling ka? To do da, kunyaw. Pwede pa ni katras. Or, ang sugi ni papa sa akon, galakat si mama sa aisle, ang giniisip niya, kaigo to, ayan amun sudan, karun sa unto. You rejoice. You for you, you don't care kung enough ang sud anon sang imo nga mga mga bisita. You just care that this day you are married to the one you love. That's why these people are call, called to rejoice and rejoice exceedingly. 
No wonder the next verse follows another beatitude related to this wedding ceremony. Verse 9, And the angel said to me, write this, isolatni, because this is important. Blessed are those this is the fourth of the seven blessings or benedictions here in Revelation. Ano nga blessing? Verse 9. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Sino nang invitado? Now, I would believe that if you are the bride, kinainvitar ka pa? Ka weird, no? Ikaw na bride, invitaron ka pa sa iyo kasal. But there are three thoughts on who the bra- who who are the guests invited here in this wedding. Nga may blessing para sa ilan. Number one, they believe that these are believers who belong to the church, called through the gospel of grace. So gina invitar ka sang inuo to be his bride by his grace. Luke fourteen. When one of those who reclined at table with him heard these things, kaya istorya si Jesus, kung imbitaron ka na sa mga punsyon, you don't, hindi ka maghandum to sit on the presidential seats or the best seats in the house. Low-key ka lang, kalma ka lang, be humble. Kasi nag-istoryahan na yun naman lang sa celebration, nagsabat na nga tao, mali ka Jesus, blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. Pursug po ni Jesus, verse 16, Sang parable, a man once gave a great banquet and invited many guests. And at the time for the banquet, he sent his servant to say those who are invited, Come, for everything is now ready. To talk about the kingdom of God, there is an invitation sent out to people to come and join or to come and dine in his kingdom. Amuni. So, ang unang thought is, these are believers who belong to the church. But number two, believers... Ang kapatidri, saved by grace before the Pentecost and the tribulation saints. Because if the bride of Christ is the church, believers before the church na natawo during Pentecost should be the guests. So Old Testament saints before Pentecost, hindi pa na church, kamo ang guest. Yes, Jesus will be marrying his bride but you are also invited to join the celebration you are no less to celebrate in this only nga si Christ na tao during kag nangabuhi during for the church so ang before pentecost that is the church and after the church kag rapture sila kay makarator ni tribulation saints you are also invited lastly the saints of all times that collectively before the church, during the church, and the tribulation saints, collectively she is the bride and individually a saint was invited and responded to the invitation to have or partake in the joy of this relationship. I would like to believe that the explanation is yes, MacArthur that what is happening here is really a, di- a different image rather than a different reality. Meaning, same lang nga mga tao. These are all believers of Christ invited. So His bride is His people called and saved to have a relationship with Christ. Now, He is inviting those who would partake of this marriage supper of the Lamb. Why are they blessed? Nga may blessing. Last ng lesson. It is a supreme blessing and an occasion for great joy to be called and to actually experience the celebration of the physical communion and this eternal communion with Christ our Savior. To be called and in, be invited to this wedding is a supreme blessing. Amuna nga may blessing gini, upod. Because that is an occasion for great joy, both for the bride herself and for the guest. Imagine that you are an unhappy bride on your wedding day. What would you look like? Gamarcha kaya? Huwag kaya nalipay? 
May picture na bala sa kasal. Ma-record na ang tsura mo, hindi kaya malipayon. This is a supreme blessing. And for you to be invited and to be actually a part of this celebration, this is a supreme blessing. That's why gindugang sa verse 9, sa sininga angel, these are the true words of God. Why this emphasis? These, what is saying here, everything that I've been saying or revealed to you since chapter 17 verse 1, which is the postscript, it is all true because this marriage will take place after the judgment. The judgment is true. This wedding, this marriage will also be true. Verse 10, ano ginhimo ni John? I fell down at this angel's feet to worship him. But he said to me, you must not do that. What happened to John? Nga nagluhod siya kang gisimba sa sining anghel. Now the ESV Bible says in verse 9, The angel said to me. But in the Greek, it's just say, And he said to me. It's unclear kung sino ka istorya, dari kay John, whether this is a voice of an angel or the voice of God. So na overwhelmed siya by this vision and overwhelmed siya by the voice he hears that he fell down and worship. Promise sang angel siya, hindi ko pagsimbaha. Why? I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers who hold to the testimony of Jesus. You worship God. In the Bible, it forbids the worship of angels. Amuna, sang kasakay kami sa Negros Navigation sa una, 30 minutes. Michael, pray for us. Gabriel, pray for us. Hambal sang angel, don't worship me. Ako ni karon mapatay. Kigan ko sang akong boss. It's not right. Parehos lang ta. You worship God. You worship Jesus. Because that is what is true. Lastly, ginhambal niya, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. What he is saying lastly here is the central theme of both the Old Testament prophecy and the New Testament preaching, ang bida sinitanan, is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But ultimately, blessed is he who is invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Why? Because it is a supreme blessing and an occasion for great joy to be called to this celebration and to actually experience the celebration of this physical and eternal communion with Christ our Savior. Explain ko na karon further anong meaning sa nasang physical communion with Christ. But let's return to our question to summarize this study. What are the reasons why God's people should celebrate and praise Him when He will complete His judgments on the evil world? I summarize talang sa dua ka application sa bunga aga. First, God's people should celebrate and praise Him. Hallelujah! Kalimagid nagwa dere. Why? Una. Because God has completed His judgments upon the evil world. The three-part series judgments He unleashed on the evil world during the tribulation has come to a close. It's easy to get carried away but by many events that had happened, by many um, inserts, pa sa mga diversion ginahambal, but at the end of it, his people, His attendants, praise Him. Kaya nakita nila that the God who started His judgment is completing His judgment. And particularly with Babylon the Great, they saw that God in His judgment has delivered or saved His people permanently from their enemies. But as... I thought through this sermon, may dadumduman kong isa ka verse sa Old Testament, Proverbs 24. Ang basang ino, Do not rejoice when your enemy falls, and let not your heart be glad when he stumbles, lest the Lord see it and be displeased and turn away his anger from him. 
Mulang hindi naisip ko. Babylon fell. Babylon the Great fell. The evil system of the world, ginjudge ang ginoo, swiftly, totally, permanently. Why is he calling his people to rejoice? Di ba ikaw man nagbawal? This is our enemy. He stumbles, he falls. You told us in the Old Testament, do not rejoice or else. Ilungguhan ibi. Kung madas maay mo kontra, o yung ginikinitan mo, hindi ka maghambal, mirisi. Hindi ka maghambal, gaba. Kay base, mainit ang ginuo sa imo, ang ginhimo sa ginuo sa imo kontra, kwaon niya to, isailo niya sa imo. Ang kontra mo masaling sa imo, mirisi. What does he mean in Proverbs 24? Amihan ko sa explanation si ni John Hill. Amaya, private revenge is not to be sought nor acted so joy at the calamity and ruin of a private enemy or a man's own enemy should not be expressed. Kaya meaning sang falling or stumble indicate tungod na hulog sa sasala. No one should rejoice when our enemy fall into sin. Pero meaning sang falling dere when an, an unfortunate circumstance happened to him. Do not add insult to injury. Consistent ang theology sa Old and New Testament. Love your enemies. If you see them fall, if you see them stumble, instead ng magsiling ka sa tataya, tuluan, taka mo sa word, somnam na. Ano na minis ang mirisi? Na, nami na para si mo. You don't rejoice at their misfortunes. Because we have been taught since the Old Testament. In other words, amuni ang love your enemies, Old Testament. But begin dugang si John Hill. Namiyang usang explanation. Joy may be expressed at the fall of the public enemies of God and His people, as was the Israelites when Pharaoh and his host fell at the Dead Sea. Exodus 15. Tapos gin patay sa ginoo tanan ng mga Egyptians kana galagas sa Israel. Exodus 15 was a song of praise and God was pleased for that song. So here this, this people at the destruction of their enemies, Babylon the Great, the world system, this evil system that God has destroyed swiftly, totally, and permanently, God Himself called them to rejoice, to praise Him, to celebrate His glorified So okay lang niya, because this is a reason to praise him and to celebrate him when he completes his judgments upon the evil world. Lastly, God's people should celebrate and praise the sovereign God as He would physically reign on earth and physically commune with His people, His bride, through Christ. God. Almighty will physically reign on earth through Christ. If chapter 18 verse 20 serves a transition for 19 verse 1 to 5, chapter 18 last time nagenta by saying, "Rejoice, O heaven! Rejoice, O people of God!" Amo na pagabot sa chapter 19, ang langit nagrejoice ginman toon. So now chapter 19 verse 6 to 10 serves as the transition for the next two sections. Why? Ang next ng lesson, second coming na. God will physically reign on earth as Christ comes again physically and He will reign on earth physically for a thousand years. And involved in that reigning is His physical communion with His people through Christ. Now, when an Old Testament believer or the believers of the New Testament die until now, they go to be with Christ in heaven, but they are there in spirit. Wala ka tulawas sa langit. Ang muna gina kumita, li mo lawas, gamba lang mga pastor, o kung pare, o kung sino muna, ginadulong tanisubong sa temporaryo yang kapawayan. Because true believers go to heaven spiritually, But not physically. There's no physical resurrection yet. 
But in the second coming of Christ, when He comes again to reign on earth for a thousand years, He will resurrect the physical bodies of His saints, reign with them, and there will be a physical communion. So I believe at the beginning of that reign, there is a celebration of a wedding. Physical mo ni mo, danay ka mo ni Jesus. So he wants to celebrate that union with a marriage supper. Ang ginagawa ko sa akin ko galing ng gabi. Will be, will there be an actual wedding ceremony? Ang sabat ko lang sa akin ko galing. Why man di ginhambal dugang? Kaya pagabot sa chapter 19 verse 11 to 21, it's about war. 20 verse 1 to 6 is about reigning. May gira, may maghari, may magdumala sa kalibutan. But there's nothing about marriage. Why na lang ginduga nga mga detalye? So we're left with this description. Blessed are those who are invited to this marriage supper of the Lamb. Because the marriage supper has come, so we rejoice. Will there be an actual ce celebration? I would say, yes. Para lang sa ako na. Kita gani nga tawo, gagasto, dako, para sa aton kasal. Si Jesus, ya malibin lang sa imo. I believe He would celebrate this physical communion. Because He's the God who instituted marriage enough for us to celebrate it. There are brides who would have a dream wedding. They don't care about their marriage, they just care about their dream wedding. So bahala magasto ko tunga sa million or isa ka million para lang sa akong dream wedding. I don't care what happens to me after the wedding. Bahala magkautang-utang kami or maputo kami, basta lang manami i akon kasal ka. Isa ka lang kaslon mo. Kasal ka naman na siya, bilog mo ang kabuhi. So, antos ka mo bilog nga marriage, but basta may dream wedding lang. Will there be an actual celebration? Yes. I would dare to think so. Why? We are called to rejoice, exceedingly glad, and give God the glory because the marriage supper of the Lamb has come. May isa verse na basahan this week sa akong invitation, uh, sa akong devotion when Jesus started the Lord's Supper when he raised the wine humble siya among disciples I will not drink again of this wine until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom meaning kun ilunggon mo so not ta ning inom sang wine is in our marriage supper celebration Ang isa sa mga wala ko nahimo sa amon kasal, kaya wala ko gainom wine, wala kami wine toasting. Pero nag-toast na to, pat ko. Nag-toast ko, pero ko nang inom. Pramal ni Jesus, there's a coming wedding. And I will drink the next wine when we celebrate our marriage. So to end, I want to make two practical challenge by asking you two questions. Number one, are you going to this wedding celebration of the Lamb because you have responded to His invitation? Blessed are those invited to the marriage supper. Pero ang gusto ko siningaaga, RSVP. Isipunta kung pilagit man makadto. Are you going to this wedding? Because when Christ invited you, you actually responded to His call. Balikan tanin verse. A man gave a great banquet, invited many. When everything is ready, he sent his servant saying, Come, for everything is now ready. What do you think the people responded to? Or how do they respond to this invitation? Verse 18. Antawa. They all alike began to make... Sino sa atun? Bihagadun panyapun? Bisan panyapun lang ha? Banquet ni ha? Punsun ni kung sa ilunggo. Hagadun ka pa buffet or hagadun ka sa okasyon, especially if it's a wedding. You don't want to go? Ang unang basang isa, I have bought a field, I must go out and see it. Is it more important than this invitation? Ang basang isa, pag wala kong kasal, testingan ko pa ako ng asawa. Pero ang isa, hambal niya, I have business to do. 
Now, one thing I learned in life is this principle that, Amalila, who you invite to your wedding are the very people you will invite to your funeral. Because wedding is an important milestone in life. You don't get to marry often. You may experience only it once in this life. So when you get married, I realize that I should invite the most important people in my life to this event. Of course, budget constraint would limit of kunsinuna pwede mo invitar. But what would you feel if you're uninvited to a friend's wedding? Pagpakasal mi, go mo, or friend mo, waya ka ginimbitar, how would you feel? Kami ni Pastor Inyel, may barkada kami. Ganaandan, hindi siya una ang kasal sa amon barkada. Mas tigulang sa sa amon, pero doon nagpasunod ang kasal. Nga kung may ginapakasal sa amon barkada, ginaimbitar ang tanan. Pero siya ikaapat nga ginkasal, na tingala kami, ginkasal na lang siya. Why gin kami imbitasyon? Pila lang sa amon ginimbitar. What will you feel if you're uninvited to a friend's wedding? So, dito ko sa iyan na tunan. Who you invite to your wedding are the people you want in your funeral. Kiti migo mo ko nga makadto ko sa iyo mo lubong kaya huwag mo ko ganyan invitar sa iyo mo kasal. Of course, ang buwan sa Pastor Inyel ko na patawad yun na nag-mature naman ko, yung patawad ko naman sa. Kasi kung mapatay ni sa ako, mauna sa patay sa ako, makadto man ko siya lubong Kita hindi naman sa kainbitar mo, patay naman sa dula. <laughs> But how would your friend or family feel if they invited you? Ikaw ang kaslon, you prepared a seat, and you reserved that seat or table for them, you invited them, but with no perfect excuse. They just say, I cannot come. Tiyano na feel dre sang sang wedding host or sang banquet host. Tama yah? Go out to the highways and hedges and compel people to come in that my house be filled. For I tell you, none of those men who were invited, who rejected my invitation, shall even taste this. So ang unang kong pamangkot sa aton, Jesus has invited people to come and join Him in His kingdom to join in this wedding celebration. Are you going? This is not the wedding of the century. This is the wedding of eternity. If there's one of the most important weddings that could happen, it's not the wedding of Charles and Diana. It's the wedding of Christ and His bride. Are you joining this wedding? Pero sa aton nga naka-response sa ning invitation, I would like to ask us this question. Are you excited as the part of the bride of Christ, His church, to celebrate your wedding with your groom, Jesus Christ? This is my comfort to lifetime single ladies or men. Because this may be the only wedding you will get to experience. It's okay. Because it would be the we best wedding you would ever experience. And don't even think that you are less of a human being. Kaya waay kaya ka experience siya kasal. So mangita ka na lang sa second hand, or mangita ka na lang sa unbeliever, or mangita ka na lang sa sino. That's the only wedding invitation. Hambalon ko ha. Subong na lang daan. Pagpakasal ka unbeliever, or sala nga pagpakasal. Bisa ano mo ka invitar sa akon, or ako pa gusto mo pakaslon, I will not go. But, this marriage, this wedding, Are you excited? Are you waiting? Are you expecting? Are you looking? Are you longing to see that day come sooner? That day when you get to physically commune with Jesus on earth. Set your, your mind and hearts are right. That Lord, if it is your will that in this lifetime I will not be married, I'm excited for this marriage because I will be married to you. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb.
Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for your word. And we thank you for all that our groom has done. He has paid the payment for this marriage. He has engaged us unto himself. He will come again. Because right now he's preparing the place. And we are excited and longing for that day. But thank you for this blessed invitation that those who are invited to join in this marriage will have the cause of rejoicing. So I pray, Father, that we will make sure that we will join this celebration because we have responded to the invitation in the saving work of the Son, Jesus Christ, our Guru. We look forward to this day. This is our prayer, Christ's name. Amen. Shall we sing our song of the month? Let us all stand, please.
Christ our home, Christ our King forevermore. Come joy or come sorrow, whatever befall, the light of the Savior will outshine them We praise you, Lord, sa pagtugan ni Musamon, sa pagpili ni Musamon, sa pagdua sa pagpili. sa sinipunimong pala ang kami na nagkakalipay. Nagkakalipay nito sa mga butang na yakarisil na mon para sa imo sa mga blessings. Thank you. 